There are literally millions of 6AL ignition boxes out there, helping to increase the suck bang blow potential of engines around the world. What makes MSD's 6AL box so popular is the capacitive discharge design. It creates a hotter, more powerful spark from idle all the way to the red line. But our product? Well, it's only as good as the installation. Our tech department gets hundreds of calls every day, and most ignition questions could be better answered in a video rather than over the phone. So I'm here to show you how to correctly install and we'll even help troubleshoot a 6AL ignition box. The first step is to find a suitable mounting location for our 6AL box. You can mount it in the passenger compartment or the engine bay if you'd like. Make sure if you put it in the engine bay though that you're well away from any high heat sources or moving parts. I will eventually install this in the passenger compartment, but today I'm going to install it in the engine bay so that way you can see the installation a lot easier. We include these rubber isolators to help reduce vibration and allow more airflow around the unit. With electronics, good grounds are critical and they can save you from a lot of frustrating intermittent power issues. So take the time now and clean all the grounds on your vehicle and if your engine doesn't have a ground strap going to the chassis, install one now. They're cheap and easy. Connect the wiring harness to the 6AL box. The MSD red and black power leads should be connected directly to your battery positive and negative terminals. Going directly to the battery helps cut down on RFI and ensures that the 6AL box gets maximum voltage during the cranking process. The smaller red wire coming from our 6AL box needs to be connected to a switch 12 volt power source. In most cases, you can reuse the wire that was on the positive side of your coil to connect to the red wire, but make sure that you have power in the run as well as cranking position first. The orange and black wires go directly to the coil and these are the only wires that get connected to the coil. The orange wire is going to go to your coil positive and the black wire will get connected to the coil negative. Notice that the wires are pre-terminated with a female spade terminal instead of a ring terminal. We include a pair of male spade adapters to use if your coil doesn't already have them. If you're planning on installing the 6AL box in a 6 or 4 cylinder engine, you'll need to cut the loops that are found on the side of the box in the harness. Cut the loops according to the instructions found on page 5. You'll cut one loop if you're running a 6 cylinder or both loops if you're going to run a 4 cylinder. Next we need to connect the appropriate trigger wire. Our 6AL box will work with a wide variety of distributors and which connection you use depends on what type of distributor you have. You can connect the box to a points distributor or amplified ignition by using the white trigger wire found in the main harness. Magnetic distributors and crank triggers will utilize the violet and green mag pickup connector that's found in the harness. If you plan on using an HEI distributor with your setup, you'll first need to determine whether you have a 4, 5, or 7 pin module design. Remove the distributor cap and count the number of terminals found on both ends of your module. Then follow the wiring diagram found in the instructions according to your terminal count. For other applications like the Petronix, Ford TFI, Chrysler Electronic, and some import applications, see the instruction manual for complete diagrams. I'll connect the white points output wire to my distributor now. Once the installation of your 6AL box is complete, a quick and easy way to make sure that you wired it correctly and that the box is working properly is to look at the LED that's built into the side of the box. The LED will flash five times with the key in the on position and the engine not running. As the engine is cranking or running, the LED flashes every time it receives a trigger signal from your distributor or crank trigger. We ship our units from the factory with the rev limiter verification turned off. This is done as a precaution. In some EFI applications, the tack signal can actually trigger the injectors and possibly flood your engine. To enable rev limit verification, just follow these steps. With the ignition switch in the off position, ground the gray tack wire. With the gray tack wire connected to ground, turn the power on to the ignition without starting the engine. Hold the gray tack output wire to the ground for at least five seconds and the LED should light up and stay solid. Release the wire from the ground before 10 seconds have passed. To confirm the process worked, turn the key to the on position and watch the tachometer. It should sweep to the RPM limit that you set on the box. If you suspect that your tachometer is not working correctly or you have a no-run condition with your foreign vehicle, you may need to purchase an MSD tack adapter. As electronics take over the automotive world, roadside repairs and driveway diagnostics may seem like a thing of the past. But if you chose MSD for your ignition needs, 
you'll not only get industry leading technology, you also get the peace of mind that you can actually troubleshoot the unit if you need to. Should you happen to have an issue with your 6AL box, here's a few ways to test the operation. There are two ways that we can field test the 6AL box while it's on the vehicle and without an ignition tester. The first way is to use the white wire to trigger the box. Turn the ignition to the off position. Remove the coil wire from the distributor cap and set the terminal approximately a half inch from the ground or connect to a spark tester. Disconnect the MSD white trigger wire from the distributor and turn the ignition to the on position but do not crank the engine. As you touch the white trigger wire to ground, you should see a spark jump the gap. If you have spark, the ignition box and coil is working properly. The other way to field test uses the magnetic pickup connector. Make sure the ignition switch is in the off position. Remove the coil wire from the distributor cap and set the terminal approximately a half inch from a good ground source. Or you can use an inline spark tester. Disconnect the MSD magnetic pickup wires from your distributor. Turn the ignition switch to the on position, but do not crank the engine. With a small paper clip or jumper wire, short the green and violet magnetic pickup wires together several times. Each time you short the wire, a spark should jump from the coil wire to the ground. If spark is present, the ignition system is working properly. If you don't have spark after performing both the field tests, you'll need to look at your wiring a little closer. Look at the terminals for any poor or loose connections, and also check the wiring for any burnt, frayed, or stretched areas. If you find something, correct it and retest. If after the retest you see that you still don't have spark, maybe you should check the coil. Replace the coil with a known good one and retest. If you now have spark, your coil was at fault. If after following the test procedures and checking all of your wiring, you find that you still have no spark, please call the MSD Tech Service for additional help. Maybe you do a lot of installs, or you're just everyone's favorite mechanic. If so, purchasing one of our digital ignition testers may be just the ticket. It allows you to easily trigger and test our 6, 7, 8, and 10 series ignitions. The LCD also displays the simulated RPM, allowing you to test the accuracy of shift lights, tacks, and any RPM activated switches. Another common tech call that we get involves the HEI distributor with an internal coil. Since there's no coil wire to remove, we often get asked, how am I supposed to test the system? It's pretty easy, so here we go. Rotate your engine until the rotor is aligned with one of the spark plug terminals. It doesn't matter which one. Pull the spark plug wire off the terminal that the rotor is aligned with and install a spark gap or inline spark tester. Now perform the test procedure that we just did by grounding the white trigger wire. Misfires in older vehicles is a common issue. This is especially true if you're still running the original spark plug wires and non-resistor spark plugs. Plug wires are a key component to your ignition system. We recommend that you use a good quality helical wound spark plug wire and never use solid core wires. Helically wound wires provide a clean path for the spark to follow while keeping electromagnetic interference from interfering with the 6AL's operation. Spark plug wire routing is also important. Make sure that you route your wires well away from any high heat sources, moving parts, or sharp objects. Also avoid routing wires side by side that may fire next to each other in the firing order. For example, on a small box Chevy, number five and number seven wires should never be ran together. If you have to cross wires, do so at a right angle. This helps reduce the chance of voltage being induced between the two wires, which can cause detonation or more serious engine damage. Spark plugs are also an important factor. Choose a plug that's suited for the engine design and the heat range that's recommended by the manufacturer. We also recommend that you replace your distributor cap and rotor with a new one whenever you install an MSD ignition box. Some early Ford and GM customers may experience engine run-on, causing their vehicle to continue running even after the ignition switch has been shut off. This typically occurs on older vehicles that utilize an external voltage regulator. Run-on occurs due to a small amount of voltage passing through the charging lamp indicator and feeding power to the MSD box, even though the key has been turned off. To solve the run-on issue, we supply a diode with your ignition kit. Diodes are like a check valve for voltage allowing current to only flow in one direction. The diode needs to be installed in the wiring going to the charging indicator lamp. Installing a diode helps prevent the voltage from backfeeding and entering the MSD box, keeping it powered and the engine running. Make sure you install your diode in the correct direction. Most diodes will be labeled with an anode and cathode side. By now you should be an expert, right? Well, maybe not an expert, 
but at least you can be a hero in the pits next weekend. I hope you enjoyed the information in this video. If you'd like to learn more about any of our great MSD products, visit our website at msdperformance.com.